We all love ourselves a good reality TV show. You might not learn anything from them, but we sure love the drama. And if you think about it, politics is really just one big reality show. You might as well call it the Real Housewives of the Campaign Trail. The Clintons, season one. Every episode was another scandal. Are you prepared tonight to say that you've never had an extramarital affair? I'm not prepared tonight to say that any married couple should ever discuss that with anyone but themselves. Season two gave us Barack and Michelle, the spunky new couple on the block who got off to a rocky start. Hope is making a comeback. It is making a comeback and let me tell you something, for the first time in my adult lifetime, I'm really proud of my country. But as all reality shows do, after two seasons, you have to come up with new ways to keep the audience interested. So you throw in a little twist for season three. A guy who's lost his mind and his poor wife who has to put up with it. By the way, this is my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this is my... Oh, you switched on me. This is my wife. This is my sister. They switched on me. <laughs> and it was their most popular season yet. They say it got over 81 million people hooked. A clueless husband plays president while his wife does her best to act like everything's normal. It's a double whammy, entertainment and suspense. But they're making season four even crazier. Believe it or not, they found someone better than Joe to play the clueless husband role. And his name is John Fetterman, the guy who just had a stroke and is running for U.S. Senate. Send me to Washington, D.C. to send so I can work with Senator Casey and I can champion the union way of life in Jersey, in, excuse me, in D.C. Thank you, thank you very much, and it's an honor. I live eight minutes away from here, and when I leave tonight, I got three miles away, Dr. Oz in his mansion in New Jersey. Super fans like us at primetime always look for clues. You know, like little comments that tell us where the plot's going. And Joe Biden just gave us one. And John, thank you uh, very much for, uh, for running. I really do appreciate it. And Zell, you're going you're gonna to be a great, uh, a great lady in the Senate. So it actually looks like Giselle is the candidate, not John. Earlier in the episode, she was seen pulling her husband away from reporters and doing all the talking. Watch. Mr. Uh, Fetterman, no. are, are you satisfied with the progress of the bridge? <laughs> the bridge question was too much for John. So the real candidate had to step in. The real candidate later got a tour of the Air Force One, trying some presidential candy and taking pictures with the big guy from season three. Plus, she had to shake hands with the fans, went over some votes for herself. I mean, you know, for John. We don't know where John was all this afternoon, but that's the point. Because John's not really the star of the show here. And he never was. Now, you may have noticed I am not John Fetterman. I would like to uh, take a moment to address the elephant in the room, which is that my husband, John Fetterman, is not in the room tonight. Giselle is in full control. She's the brains of the operation, and John really is just her arm candy. Those are direct quotes from her. She's the brains, and he's arm candy. Now watch the two of them interact, and tell me if you notice something. Hey, everybody. It's John and Giselle. As you can see, we hit a little bump on the campaign trail. Um, yeah. It was on Friday. Uh, I just wasn't feeling very well, so I decided, you know what, I need to get checked out, so I, I went to the hospital. I need to get checked out, because yeah. I was right, as always. <laughs> we all know women like this, don't we? Sometimes it's cute, and it could be their thing. There's affection there. But if Fetterman wasn't listening to his doctor for years, which led him to have a heart attack, not taking his meds, what was Giselle doing the whole time? Why wasn't Giselle on it? Well, hopefully we'll learn more about that next season. Now, primetime doesn't usually care about the wives of candidates, but we do when it seems like they're the actual candidates. So it's worth asking, who is Giselle Fetterman? Well, she's a bisexual Brazilian immigrant who swept John off his feet, which is hard to do, but I think she's into CrossFit. And let's just say it took a little work. The way Giselle and I met was really kind of strange. 
I was actually working out of Newark at the time and I happened to be at a yoga retreat and it talked about this discarded city. It was this article that mentioned Braddock. She wrote me a letter and she uh, ended up coming to visit in early October of later that year and uh, it just kind of went from there. And that was you know, eight years ago and three kids ago and I showed up and kind of never left. You went to a yoga retreat and during said retreat, you happened to read an article about Braddock, Pennsylvania and how rundown the town was. So you decided to write a letter to the mayor of the rundown town and told him you wanted to visit him in the rundown town? You were a Brazilian national and when you married him, you became a U.S. citizen and now people call you the slop, which is short for the second lady of Pennsylvania. So what's life like for the slop? Well, take a look for yourself. So, where do you live? I live in a converted car dealership in Braddock, Pennsylvania. Cool. Is that a picture of your husband up there? I left his head on all of these because, you know, it's a public, a lot of people come here, so I thought that was nice. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here. She married a guy who was living with his parents, and then they moved into a converted car dealership, and now she's giving tours. And she left his head on all the family photos. It's the perfect love story. But how does Giselle really feel about her husband? What one thing do most people not know about your husband? Oh, that he's so sensitive. They think he's this big, tough guy, but he's a really emotional, big, softy baby. If you could reverse jobs with your husband, what would be the first law that you change in office? Um, well, he doesn't, he can't, if I could change laws in his position, but there's a lot of a change. Again, I'm picking up vibes that she's the real candidate here. If you could switch jobs with your husband. I'm also getting the sense that this is all a part of Giselle's plan. Not sure if she hatched it during the yoga retreat in Brazil or in John's parents' basement, but there's something quite calculating about Giselle, which would make her the perfect senator. And the media is reading from the same script. They're admitting Pennsylvanians aren't just voting for John Fetterman. It's actually a package deal by voting for Giselle, too. It's not just the candidate, but the couple that makes this campaign unconventional. If John is bringing the casual, his wife, Giselle, is bringing the polish and the personality. She's been front and center at rallies, on social media, and in campaign emails. How did that come about? How did you guys decide to really come as a package deal in this way? I think we are. I mean, our family is a package deal. And they're already selling her like she's the one on the ballot. The Washington Post is saying she's forging on through her husband's heated Senate race. And even Rolling Stone is calling her a, quote, unlikely political star. They say Fetterman only offers high fives and fist bumps to his supporters and repeats a gruff thank you. But it's Giselle staying just a pace ahead of her husband, who takes the questions, accepts the compliments, and carries on the conversations. <laughs> Maybe this is what John meant when he said this. My name is John Fetterwoman. <laughs> Isn't this the craziest season yet? So if John wins, Giselle's coming to DC. Has the bisexual Brazilian immigrant been vetted? I doubt it, but that's the point. They'll vote with Schumer 100% of the time, and Giselle becomes the star. You'll see her on MSNBC every week on the cover of Vogue. When Hunter finds out she's bisexual, he'll make a run. I'm sure the Chinese already have a folder on her. Who knows? The Chinese may already hacked into his computer translator machine. I'm sure the FBI's all over that. She's definitely not a Brazilian fang fang. That would really make the next season interesting. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.